peoples? So what we have here is the new Runcam Split Hybrid. 40, 4K at 30 frames per second, 2.7 at 60, 1080p at 120, and here is what it looks like. It is split style. Looks like fantastic construction. They have a nice little aluminum back on here to protect the components. And I suppose some heat sink properties would go along with that little aluminum case there. Instead of the ribbon cable, they have these spaghetti style cables. We got the over under lenses there, and it's a single board, like a so. With your SD card slot there and the little cable mushes on just like the other ones I got it popped off of here so that I can install it in the quad here's what we get with it here's the box chunk of foam piece of cardboard some card uh, a little bag of stuff connectors there's the little um, SD card holder thing that will hold the SD card in. When you install it, you screw this on top of the board. A little pile of screws in there. Oh, and another little piece of foam down there in the bottom. Now, uh, the manual is not up online yet because as of me having this camera, it is not yet on the website but it will have the um, QR code control just like the um, the uh, Runcam 5 box thingy and it will also have UART control so you can change the SD settings and stuff with the UART which I will be checking out as soon as I get it popped in a quad so that um, we can figure all that out. HD supports UART remote control. Analog supports UART firmware update. The HD sensor is a Sony 8 megapixel. The analog sensor is a 1.3 Sony. HD recording field of view is 145. The FPV field of view is 150 at 4.3. All the video resolutions, 4K, 30 frames per second, 2.7 at 60 frames per second, 2.7 at 50 frames per second. So that's your PAL and NTSC because it's switchable from PAL to NTSC. 1080p at 120, 1080p at 100, 1080p at 60, and 1080p at 50 with an mp4 video format and like I said NTSC blah blah uh, pal switchable um, you can use up to a hundred and twenty eight gig card in this bad boy which is freaking awesome so if you're doing like a, a film shoot something like that I mean you can that's like days of freaking footage I'll probably run like a 64 in here so what, yeah, that's what I have in there right now is a 64. It says recommended U3 up to 120 and above. What I have in here, what I'm going to be using is the SanDisk Extreme, which exceeds those expectations. The SanDisk is actually a um, 160, 60, and A2. And I believe... I don't know, but anyway, it's this one. That's what I'm going to be using in there. You guys can figure that out yourselves. Uh, what else do we got? The PCB, this is uh, the 20x20 20 20 mounting. It's 29x29 20 29 overall. So it'll work great in a little 3 inch. You can power this bad boy from 5 to 20 volts. Power directly from battery will generate surges and not do not directly power from the battery 
from 4S bat. I'm sorry. Do not directly power from 4S battery or above. Power directly with battery will generate surges and burn the camera. So you're safe to hook it directly to a 4S, but if you're running 6S, run it through something else. It weighs 18 grams. So there we have that. Uh, what else do we want to talk about here? Dog, stand by. My dog is bugging me. My dog. Oh, okay. So, what I'm thinking is um, I'm going to put it in this little three inch here because how awesome will it be to have HD recording in a three inch? This is my own little custom frame three inch here that flies freaking amazing. So doing like Cinewhoop stuff and stuff like that, being able to get 4K video without having to tote around a freaking 120 gram camera such as this will be absolutely amazing. I was going to put it in my Acrobrat because I think it will work freaking absolutely fantastic in the Acrobrat because it's got the little slides here and will fit in there like perfect. But um, I discovered my Acrobrat has a little D lamb in one of the arms here so I don't know maybe I'll stick it in here anyway I haven't quite decided yet probably not this thing flies great but this thing is one of my favorite flying quads and will be amazing for doing like little cinna stuff because of the way the head is up here it keeps like the um the uh, props out of view and all that good stuff it works out really well so I'm gonna stick it in this little head here the only thing I saw and this is why I have it disconnected so that I could stick the cable through the hole here but because this is designed for a micro cam like this has the split in it right now that works pretty well but it's only 1080p as we all know not 2.74 K but when I have this little guy mounted in here, it is going to stick out just a fuzz there and not be totally protected. But that may be a good thing so that I don't get the, the lips of the carbon in the um, video. And being that this quad's so small and light, it's probably not going to crash too hard anyway. So anyway, that is the first look at what we have here. Let me get it all loaded up in a quad, and then we'll go fly this bad boy and see what kind of video we can get. I eat my gang signs. Walmart, bitches. Walmart. McDonald's, motherfucker. What up? Okay, so here we go. I got her all installed and ready to go on my little three inch here. Everything seems to be working just fine. Here is the app. And one thing I noticed right away is that the GoPro doesn't even do this. You can bring the ISO all the way down to 100. So on bright shiny days that's going to be awesome. So I'm going to set, the run cam girl is texting me as we speak, so she keeps coming on the screen there. So I'm going to go with video quality high, of course, loop recording off. I don't want auto record on because I'm going to do it on a switch because we have UART control. We're going to start out at 2.7K, 60 frames per second, volume low. Because the volume, I'm sure, is not that good. And we'll leave the shutter on auto. So now we press apply. And it says... Uh, power the camera on, battery, make sure SD card is installed. So, we're going to power it on. And we have video. I know you guys can't see this at the moment, but... We do have video going on. Next, short press the power button to stop recording. Okay. Uh, 
the power button is the one in the back. Stop recording. If you turned off auto recording, please ignore, ignore this step. Blah, 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 blah. In standby mode, blue LED constantly on. Long press mode button to switch setting mode. Green LED constantly on. So we're going to long press this button. And I can tell you something else. When you long press this button so that the green light comes on, I'll flip you guys up here and show you if you can see it. It will say on the screen QR mode. So let me see. Let me adjust the camera here and see if I can. Eh. Eh. All right. Hopefully I got that screen in there. It's a little sideways, I know, but okay. We're in QR mode. We got that. The green light is on. Step four, point camera lens with the QR code at a distance greater than five centimeters. Okay. After the configuration is successful, apply the camera will switch, blah, 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 blah. And the blue LED will be constantly on. So let's give it a shot. Five centimeters. We might be getting some... Um, light reflections here oh I think it did it because it just switched and now the blue you can see it says HD preview up there and the blue light is now on so let's try something because it will give us the status when we first plug it in let's see what it says And it says run cam HTO joystick control 2.7k 60 frames per second. So we were successful. All right. So we got that whooped. And right here, underneath the um, QR code after you scan it, it tells you what you configured it as date stamp off run cam logo off flip screen off saturation is two exposure compensation contrast sharpness average medium low light enhancement auto shutdown power frequency 60 hertz which is NTSC so there is all that I actually didn't see all those when I was doing the configuration thing, so it must be in here somewhere. Oh, here we go. You got to hit general. And then it gives you all those other things. But I'm going to leave it oh, I'm going to leave it as is for now and we'll see how it goes and we'll monkey with the settings later late late later so the the app is up just update your run cam app if you already have it and click on obviously the um, hybrid and then you can do the QR configuration cool and there is a manual on all this, so if anything, I, you know, because I'm not too good at reviews and explaining shit and all that shit. So I would say refer to the manual for anything I may have missed or f totally fucked up on. We're going to go fly this bad boy here and see what happens, all right? <laughs> all right, so here we go with the three. I even got my official run cam hat on that they gave me <laughs> to test out the little hybrid so we're gonna go with um, 2.7 K 60 frames per second because I am hoping that that will be awesome because that's what I probably want to shoot most video in For rendering and uploading and all that stuff I use on the GoPro I usually use 2.7 30 frames per second but we shall see how it goes hopefully it goes good and then maybe I'll do a um, <laughs> 
Maybe I'll do one at 4K 30 frames per second next, and then try 1080p. Let's see how it goes. As long as my dog stays mellow and doesn't bark at people, we'll shoot all three. But I will tell you this. I'm not going to go crazy with this. I'm going to try to keep it fairly cinematic. One thing, it is a three inch. So if you get two nuts, no matter what you do, a three inch is going to have prop wash. So we'll just try to fly kind of smooth. Not necessarily like cinematic, but smoothish. Smoothish. -ish. All right. And also, like I said, I have not updated the firmware or messed with this 3 inch in months. So let's hope it is up to the task. We're doing what we need it to do. Oh, wow, the FPV camera looks freaking amazing. It is beautiful. Just like the Eagles and everything else, crystal freaking clear. The colors are popping. And I just got it on um, the default settings. I didn't mess with it at all. So here we go, let's go for a fly. Okay, so the first thing of note here that I want everybody to be aware of is that uh, all I did was change the ISO to 100 in the settings as you saw previously because it's the middle of a bright, shiny day and I thought the low ISO would help it, um, help it out better. So um, I'm sure we can even do better with this video. I also did not edit this at all this is straight from the camera um, I didn't run it through the uh, through the editor and tweak it so I'm sure like I said I bet I can make this look really really good um, I'm overall very impressed with it um, like going over the grass quickly here and things like that um, you don't see the shimmering that you do with some of the cameras with the lower bit rate and lower resolution that can't pick up the the leaves and the blades of grass. I picked this spot out here because it has a nice contrast of a lot of different colors with the greens and the browns and the blue in the lake and the sky and the buildings. So, um, yeah, at uh, 2.7K, 60 frames per second here, I think it looks really freaking good. Um, the light transitions are decent. Um, you know, you, you get a few of the little, like, uh, dark spots, but, like, here where I go into the, the trees and transition from, from light to dark and then dark to light, the transition is like spot on right there. But right there where you see I do the backflip, the trees are a little blacked out. But a hero session has that same same thing in it, you know what I mean? I can edit that out or you know raise the exposure. At 100 ISO, it's a little underexposed. And that's kind of what I want. It's way easier to brighten things up than to try to darken them when they're overexposed. Once you're overexposed, that's that's end game. You know what I mean? But underexposed, I can deal with in in editing, just like I do with my um, sessions five, or you know, back with the sessions four, or or any of it. But otherwise, I am very um, very happy with the performance of this thing. Okay, so now we're looking at 1080p at 60 frames per second. Kind of the same thing, but um, it looks very similar to the 2.7K, but I think what will happen is when I start editing things um, afterwards, the 2.7K is going to give me a lot better 
edit at the end product than the 1080p will just because I have more to work with, more bitrate, more resolution, everything like that, more in depth. But this is still, and, and the 1080, this is still really good video. Um, and the 1080p can go all the way up to 120 frames per second, which is freaking fantastic. So if I wanted to do like some uh, slow-mo cinema stuff like that, this would be like ideal to like um, cruise through something and then put it on slow-mo. Here in a minute, I'm going to um, put it on 4K and I tried to do some... Um, some cinema type stuff because as we know that anyway we'll get to that when i do the 4k but anyway um again very impressive the colors are blinging like i said before if i if i once i figure out how to really do the settings in this camera it's going to be a game changer i am sure and uh, that and what i will do personally is just like i do with the gopro is i will turn the saturation all the way down and turn the sharpness all the way down and then figure out exactly how to set the IO and white balance and stuff like that to make it really pop and happen. And then I will add the colors, you know, I'll color grade it myself when I edit the video. And I'm sure it will come out a hundred times better. But this footage is just like if I had, you know, GoPro color running or anything like that. Again, no shimmering. No um, loss of details in the leaves. The shadows are nice. The colors are nice. I mean, what can you say? It is definitely a good camera. There's no doubt about it. I'm loving it, especially on this 3-inch. I can get 2.7K or 1080p at 120 on a 3-inch. That's a freaking game changer for me, man. That is awesome. All right, so here we go with the um, 4K at 30 frames per second. I tried to slow it down a bit here and make it a bit more um, like I'm doing a cinematic shoot. Um, I could do, I could have probably done better if my camera angle was a bit lower. But I did, to, you know, the 4K 30 frames per second is not going to be good for high speed. That is for sure. But I think it's going to be brilliant for doing like some cine whoop type stuff some slow cinematic swooping scenes kind of like i'm doing here this is a little faster than i would go and i'm a little rusty on the old uh three inch it's been quite a while since i flew it so i kind of got um a little dippy here and there coming around the corners and anyway this is the 4k at 30 and again it is it is quite quite beautiful i don't even know you're not going to be able to tell on youtube itself obviously because you know it sucks but youtube sucks <laughs> anyway so that's the 4k looks also looks excellent all right so a couple things off rip um off rip first of all i forgot how much fun it is to fly a three inch <laughs> i'm a little rusty on my three inch skills because it takes a little bit more of a touch to fly a three inch super smoothly like if you go back i have a video on three inches and how they're more of a pilot squad because you really really got to focus on your piloting skills to get them super smooth but if i'm zeroed and focused in on my three inch you won't even know that I'm flying a 3 inch as opposed to a 5 inch. And the other thing I forgot about that just opened a bunch of doors for me is I forgot that I have all these little areas right down the street from my house that I've been wanting to violate with a 3 inch because it's just, a 5 inch is just a little scary, little much might attract a little too much attention in these smaller areas, but they're like perfect for a 3 inch. So, um, look forward to that. Other than that, um, yeah, three inches up and running. And uh, they're freaking a blade. If you don't have a three inch build, I suggest, like I said in my video before, that everybody 
that wants to really get good with their piloting skills builds a three inch and learns to fly it practices on flying it smoothly because I know for me when I really focus in on that three inch I can fly it fantastic see look at all this stuff right here all this three inch territory I go, oh light screen hold on everyone hang on like this is all three inch territory in here I hope the winds not too bad there's a little park over there Anyway, all right, until next time, peace out, Charles and Trout. La 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 Oh, this place is so ridiculous sometimes. You guys wouldn't believe the fucking shit I go through some days around here.